Now our first carol is uh, come and join the celebration and I think for this one really we must stand as we sing. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. <clears throat> and in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased.
Robert, please, if you would come and do your reading, The Shepherd's Visit to See Jesus. Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 18. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the dead, lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known the world the same which was told them concerning this child. And all the day that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts gold and frankincense and myrrh. to 
grazing sheep at night. Do not fear the glory light. You are precious in his sight. God has come to raise the lowly. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? You can come as you are, but it may set you when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for his glory make room in your heart make room in your heart dreams for his glory make room in your heart 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 well happy christmas everybody <laughs> And uh, I know some of you with young children uh, have had a very <laughs> early start this morning, I'm sure. And that's very exciting, isn't it? It's lovely. So thank you so much for coming to on behalf of all of us at Bally Halbert. It's lovely to see so many who just, you know what? You made an effort this morning. You wanted to be, you wanted to get your focus. This is about the birth of Jesus. And for that, I know God will bless you. Um, I just want to read a couple of your verses. I'm really, really not going to be long. Okay, and those aren't famous last words, those are actual words, they're actually true. So I won't be too long with you. I just want to read a little bit out of the book of John and a little bit out of the epistle to the Philippians. And in the book of John, marvelous book written by the apostle John. And I'm going to read a little bit in verse 15 of chapter 1. And, and John, after talking about in the beginning being the Word, and the Word made flesh and dwelling among us, he then says this. He said, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only begotten who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And then in Philippians Paul's writing about what happened in, in Jesus' later life. And he said, speaking about Jesus, he said, who being in the very form, the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature, the very form of a servant, and being made in human likeness and found in appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. That's our readings. And I want to tell you something. I was, I was coming home. I usually travel to work on my motorcycle because, they, as I said before, the council were good enough to build me a, a a lane all the way down the Newton Arts Road 
that I allow the buses to use as well, but motorbikes can use it, and it's just great because if you ever see me going down by you and you're stuck in traffic, well, but anyway, I was coming home on my motorcycle the other day, just a couple of weeks ago, about 10 days ago, coming through Lockery's, and um, all of a sudden, I just caught a, a flash of something crossing, and I had my visor up because um, I had got all dirty with the, the muck on the road, so I just had it up for a little bit, and what do you know, this... It was like the size of a stone, but it wasn't as hard as a stone, but it wasn't as soft as a bird either. I, don't, I just don't know what it was, but it came right, and wouldn't you know, under my visor and hit my right eye. And it was very painful. It was really painful to pull in, and I thought, oh, there's blood all over my eye. But it wasn't. It was just very sore. But it got me to thinking about journeys. Because you see, my, my journey from work each day is just a journey. And you know what? Maybe you're a bit like me. Sometimes you can hardly tell. You, you arrive at work and you go, how did that happen? <laughs> you go into automatic mode. And, and so sometimes a journey can be, especially if we're sort of used to being on it, you, it takes the moments along it that you remember. For me, the moment was whenever something whacked me on the eye. And so I remember that journey. I got whacked on the eye outside Lockheed on my motorbike. And I was thinking about the Christmas story. There's several journeys there, aren't there? Well, there's the journey of the wise men. Now, we reckon it was 800 miles that those Magi came from the Far East. And maybe it took two years for them to follow that star, Jacob's star, until they eventually arrived. But that long, long journey, we know nothing about it. It was all defined in a moment. Whenever they came to the house and found the child and laid their treasures before him. That journey was defined in a moment, just if you like how my journey was defined by something that happened. Moment. If you think of the shepherds, the shepherds had long careers of looking after sheep. You know, it's a thing they did all the time, but I'm sure they were pretty uneventful. I know they were looking out after the sheep, but you know, I would imagine at night time whenever the sheep are sort of hunkered down and they're, they're sitting there breathing away and the night's quiet and still and you, all you can hear is the quietness of the animals around you breathing. It's pretty uneventful. And yet the career of these shepherds is all encapsulated in one moment when suddenly the heavens open and they are... As the Bible tells us, the King James, they are sore afraid. They are terrified in this moment. That moment defined their whole careers. And, and I, was, I was just thinking about that. The, the, how we're all in time like this. You know, life is like a journey, isn't it? Like my motorcycle journey, like the journey of the Magi, like the journey of the... The shepherds spending night after night. That's our life. We are in a linear path of life. And as we go along that life, sometimes things are uneventful. If you, well, what did you do last year? Well, you remember it by things that happened in it. You don't remember the whole thing. You remember things that happened in it. It's like a journey. Like whenever you go for a drive in the car or maybe you're in the passenger seat or the back seat and you're going on a long summer holiday and you're traveling down through maybe England or down through the south of Ireland or wherever it might be you're going in a long journey, you don't remember that whole journey. You remember the moments on the journey. You remember the mountain you saw. You remember that field of llamas. Do you remember that field of llamas we saw? You remember, oh, you came across a road traffic accident. Everybody seems okay. There was a monkey on a motorbike. You remember those moments, right? That's what you remember. But we're all traveling together down, if you like, this journey of life that, if you can imagine it like a piece of cord, and it's, on, it's not dis made distinct in itself unless the events of life happen in it. And those events of life are like little knots that happen, your child was born. Um, you remember whenever Granny was sick. You remember that time you had good results or otherwise in your GCSEs or A-levels or whatever you did, your transfer test. And as you go through life, our life is defined and made distinct by the events that happen in it. 
But nonetheless, we are all of us traveling along that road at the same speed. C.S. Lewis said, the future happens to us, all of us, at the same rate. 60 minutes to the hour. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter who you are. We are all traveling at 60 minutes to the hour. And so as we move along, like as if we were on a little boat, going down a river, we're all in the same boat. And as we look, we can see things pass by. But once they're passed, you remember that? Well, it's sort of past the birth of that child. Granny wasn't well. Well, that's in the past now. And so our life goes on. And we're traveling along this cord of our life, defined by the things that happen on it. Time. Time for the wise men. Time for the shepherds. Those things that were past. But I was thinking about this because here's the amazing, absolutely stunning paradox. God is not in time. Things don't happen to God. It's not like God's coming along and, oh, there's a thing that happened to him. Something. Because God can't learn anything new. If he was to learn something new, then he would be more than he was. And that would mean that what he was was less than he is. And he's always full and complete in himself. So God doesn't travel through. The theologians give a term to that. They call it God's omnipresence and omniscience. Now, sometimes we think of God's omnipresent, meaning that if you pray to God here in Bally Halbert, away over in Japan, some little girl called Kitty is also praying, and God is in two places at one time, but it's much bigger than that. God's omnipresence means that not only is he geographically everywhere at the same time, he is in time, space, and place, in past, in present, and future. God is now at that moment when you drew your first breath in the hospital or at home as a little child. God is there now. It's not the past for God. He is, whenever Moses had to go to the children of Israel, go back to Egypt and to try and bring them out of bondage, and God spoke to Moses, <coughs> Moses, and Moses said to God, well, who are you? Who will I say sent me? What is your name? And God said that his name was I am. Neither past, present, future, but ever, always. God doesn't travel through time like us. He's not subject to time. Except here is the amazing paradox of the incarnation. Because in the incarnation, God makes himself the uncreated God who is not subject to created time or space. God makes himself one of us. And like one of us, he comes into the world as a baby. And moments of time are woven into the life of Jesus Christ. This is the unbelievable miracle of the, of the incarnation that God is manifest in flesh, as the Bible says. That he, that he becomes one of us. That he knows what it's like to have friends who die. He, he knows what it's like to have moments of rejection. He knows what it's like when grief comes along. Or he knows what it's like in a time of great joy. And so God enters our time space in Jesus Christ in the manger. And that's the amazing thing that's happening in the manger. That God has stepped into time. And not just that. But the Bible tells us that he humbled himself. That he set aside who he was and he became one of us. And so God walks our road with us. God goes along our path. And he experiences what we experience. He knows what it is to be hungry. He knows what we, we sing away in a manger. No crying he makes. Well, I don't know. I think Jesus as a baby cried just like any one of us. He was hungry like any one of us. Because he became one of us. And so he shared those moments with us. That is the amazing miracle of the incarnation of the birth of Jesus in the world. But of course, he doesn't just come alongside us 
and share our experiences in life. He does far more than that. You see, whenever many of you here realize that Jesus Christ was God, that he gave us life for you, that part of the moment in his life is when he hung on a cross, that that was one of the events in the life of God. And when you believed that, that he died for your sins, then you accepted him. And the miracle of the incarnation is this, that God ties his life into yours. That God eternally ties himself into your life. And he lives in the heart of a believer. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, says Jesus to us who trust in him. So listen, happy, happy Christmas. I hope that God blesses you in the joy of your presence that you get and the time that you spend with your family. And for some of you who are at home not able to be with us, we here in Valley Halbert pray for you. We pray that God will richly bless you at home, maybe on your own, maybe you're not able to have family with you because of current circumstances, but may God truly bless you. And may he bless us all. And may you too have his life tied into his life by that admission that he is Lord, that you will believe him and let him live in you and take you eventually on that long journey of your life or short as it may be, home with him. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you that you are not... Lord, as the song says, God watches from a distance. You don't watch from a distance. You come right beside us and you lived our lives. You walked in our earth. You felt the cold of night and the heat of the sun, the hunger of a stomach, the tears on the cheek, the grief of loss and the pain of death. And then Jesus, you lived alongside us and offered with your arms open wide a home in heaven and forgiveness from sins and eternal life. Thank you for Jesus. May all of us here this morning put our faith and trust in the one who was born in a manger, died on a cross, but rose to glory and will take home those who trust in him. Thank you, Lord, for this time of year. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, we're going to sing a final piece and we'll stand for this one because what else could you sing? But let's adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. God bless you. Uh, I hope whenever you get home, you have a lovely day. Uh, Maybe there'll be many moments today you'll take home with you for the rest of your life. God bless.